Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Willow is now three months old and she is very energetic. We are super happy to have her working alongside us. We have just started the framing stage of the project, so here we go. So here we are, we have the block all finished. The outside's all backfilled, the inside's all backfilled with sand, and that's all packed down. I'm framing a two by six wall. This is the back wall of the first floor. There's no windows in it, so it's uh, pretty easy to frame. Um, I did it all in one shot with the exterior sheathing. I thought I'd be smart and use the tractor to lift it up, but a miscalculation, I was a couple inches short of getting it over top of the bolts. These are the bolts that are in the block to hold the wall to the block. Uh, luckily, a neighbor saw a struggle. He came over um, and gave us a hand and we got it into place. So each wall after that, I built a little smaller. Once I got all my struggles figured out, uh, everything was simple after that. So the back wall is good. The west wall has two windows and a door. So it was a little more time consuming, but I did that in two sections, a 14 foot and a 12 foot to give me a 26 foot wall. And there you can see, I got my garage doors starting to be framed. So there'll be three garage doors across the front. And uh, you can see my mess there, like any construction site. And then I'm starting to lay out the sill plate uh, for the east wall. So I got the third garage door opening uh, framed and upright. Here I am working on the middle one. I'm getting a measurement for the top plate. That's the two by six board that connects all the walls together by overlapping. You can see through the openings right now, I got a diagonal two by six. That is to keep everything nice and square. So once I get my measurement, I come over to the saw station here I am, I'll measure everything out. I'll cut it to length. And then it'll be time to install it. With Jill and I, we have some different work schedules. So sometimes getting an extra hand can be a little tough. Uh, so in this case, wrestling, you know, a 13 foot two by six, uh, not, a, not a big deal, but there are occasions where uh, you got to get a little creative when you work on your own. But when we both have some time off, she is definitely a big help. But for now, I have Willow. You can see her on the ground. She's a big help. She will attack everything, including the air hose for the air nailer. When it gets uh, a little leak in it, she likes to attack that and it causes more time for me to fix things but again it's a lot of fun having her around so here's a time lapse of building a wall this is a wall that's going to go from the addition to the house it's a two by six wall studs are set on 16 inch centers the top plate and the bottom plate i already have marked out with the 16 inch mark and the line is already scribed so i'm just using the air nailer that thing is super handy it's running off a compressor from the shop right now um, so put the stud in place and a couple bumps and they're nailed in. So that's super great. So once they're all nailed in, I'm going to measure corner to corner. This is going to make sure the wall is super square. And then once it's all square, I'm going to put the sheathing down. I'm going to nail the sheathing down and then it's going to be held into place. And that wall will be square. So once I stand it up, I'll just got a level front to back and the wall is complete. So I lucked out with this one. This wall is all framed, but I got a smaller one to do. So now that I got a surface to work on, I'm gonna frame it on top of this one. So it's another short wall that goes from the addition to the house. So I'm just gonna do it on top of this one. That way I got a level surface to work on. Again, it's super quick. Top plate and bottom plate are all marked out. Just pop a couple air nails in there, double check square, put a piece of sheathing on it, and I'm good to go. So with the engineer drawings, there are two posts that hold up the second floor. These go under the two main support beams. So they're spec'd out at three inch square tube. I was able to run over to the local metal supply and pick these up. I had them cut them a little bit longer so I could double check the measurements on site. So here I am just welding the top cap on and then uh, I, I cut them to length, welded the base plate on 
and everything was good to go. These sit on a special footing. It's a three foot by three foot by I believe 10 inch deep uh, footing that's under the slab. Um, again, that's to hold up on the second floor. So before I installed them, I gave them a, a wipe down here and uh, gave them a, a coat of paint just to get all the hard to reach areas and just so I wasn't getting paint all over the, the top beam or, or the floor. So this turned out uh, really well. Of course, the hottest day of the summer so far, the all the floor joists showed up. So anyway, I was pretty eager to jump into those, but uh, they came with a few problems. Of course, today's the day the tractor decided to give up. The floor joists just showed up. But the steering linkage decided to have a go on me there. So anyway, being, uh, being a European tractor, it's all metric. So I think I found a... Uh, a part that will fit found a tie rod off of a Ford excursion so I uh, got an auto part store coming in uh, bringing the part in this afternoon so I'll run in and get that I'll have to make up a new uh, a new bar but that attaches from there to the front steering and that is what pushes and pulls the steering to turn it left and right so anyway not a good day for that to give up on me but no problem we'll uh, we'll get her sorted out so we finally got the, the first beam up. That's a, a triple two by 16. That's one of the two main beams that's gonna hold up the second floor. Uh, without the tractor, it was a little difficult to get up there, but Jillian was able to give me a hand, so uh, we got it done. And there you can see the steel post that I was welding earlier in the video. That's one of the two steel posts that will be in. There's the pad for the second post. So a little tough to see, but there's a string line up there. That's where the second beam is going to go. And again, hottest day of the year, so we're doing what we can, but it was a little bit slower, but we got it done. So with Jillian's help, it only took uh, two days to get all the floor joists and beams installed. So now it's time to put it in the subfloor. You can see uh, I was able to put a pallet on the tractor and lift it up, which was pretty handy. So there you can see the second beam that I uh, was speaking about a little earlier in the video and right there we have a staircase opening that uh, we'll explain uh, in some future series. So this is a three quarter tongue and groove uh, OSB subfloor. So it's gonna get glued and screwed to the floor joists. So I think for now we're gonna wrap the video up here. I got a little more footage, we're a little bit farther, but uh, I think this is gonna come out as a pretty good video. So I appreciate it if you stayed this far in the video. Thanks for watching the series. I hope you like them. Give me a thumbs up or a comment if you do like it. I will make sure to uh, keep up with the filming. There's uh, there's a few steps I do miss, I know. But, uh, you know, on top of a building, building an addition, there's a few other things. But uh, I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you.